In a typical feature film, once filming has wrapped, we move on to what's called post-production. In post-production, editing is the central hub. Everything else revolves around film editing. And what program do editors typically use? The big two are Avid, Media Composer, and Adobe Premiere Pro. I had been using Premiere Pro for 20 years, way before the Creative Suite era and long after the Creative Cloud era started. A few years ago, I switched to DaVinci Resolve. I had a few months left on my annual Creative Cloud subscription, so I figured there would be enough time to see if Resolve could compete. The short answer is, it did. I've used DaVinci Resolve to edit documentaries, fashion films, and lots of YouTube content. As of version 16 and above, Resolve can compete with the best. Is the free version good enough for editing feature films? Absolutely. Any filmmaker or editor looking for a free, fully professional editing application should pick Resolve. There's no need to pirate Premiere Pro or anything else anymore. On a big feature film, here's how things work. Different people handle titles, end credits, overlays, visual effects. One company might do chroma keying, another does the wire removal, another does compositing, and so on. Now these tasks can be spread across various companies worldwide sometimes. Color grading happens after the edit is locked. But sometimes, even after the edit is locked, the director or studio might ask for changes. The editor is the linchpin because only he or she knows the film's current state. If the editor uses the wrong shot, version, or whatever, it's chaos. For low-budget films, all these tasks are often handled by just a few people. Sometimes, someone crazy like me comes along and tries to do everything themselves. That's why the Hero Box exists. A Hero Box is a single machine with one software that combines editing, visual effects, and color grading. Let's say an editor insists on using their own system for editing. Once editing is complete, the project is moved to the Hero Box for color grading, effects, and finishing. If halfway through color grading, the director wants to re-edit the film, it's a lot more common than people think, the Hero Box becomes invaluable. In fact, every time someone says, lock the edit, I roll my eyes 360 degrees so no one notices. Instead of sending the project back to the editor for re-edits and then round-tripping it for finishing, the person operating the hero box, they used to call them artists, can switch to the editing part of the program, make the edits in real time, then switch back to color grading. This can all be done in a few minutes. The same goes for visual effects. A lot of chroma keying and effects work can be handled in the hero box Skin retouching is one of the prime functions of a hero box. The most popular hero boxes were Autodesk Smoke for low budget projects and Autodesk Flame and Inferno for higher end work. I used Autodesk Smoke when it was a Mac only product and it worked well. Autodesk Flame is mostly used in the commercial and fast paced TV world as far as I know. To be honest though, I see no reason to invest in Autodesk Flame at this time. It's tone deaf overpriced. Ever since Creative Suite came along, especially CS3, Adobe pulled an Autodesk, only a million times better. You had the ability to seamlessly move between Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. It wasn't the same software technically, but you could make changes in one and it would update in the other. At the time, you also had DVD authoring apps and Flash. Adobe was unbeatable. Then one day, they decided to kill Speedgrade. Suddenly, Adobe didn't have a color grading app. Typically, you finish the film in the color grading app. Premiere Pro and After Effects do have some built-in color tools, pretty good ones, but none of those will replace the full functionality of a complete grading app. Adobe's strong point today is still After Effects and Photoshop. I love Adobe Audition too. Avid and FCP never kept up with Adobe. Color grading apps started losing their value over time, and many companies went bankrupt. Blackmagic Design bought Resolve. Initially, it was just a top-notch color grading app, but you still needed to use another editing program. Soon, they added editing features and Fusion for visual effects, and it changed into a hero box. Today, Resolve offers a great editing application, a top-notch node-based compositing application, and an incredible color grading application. It also includes Fairlight, a professional-grade audio app under the hood at least. Breaking into the audio world is challenging because Avid Pro Tools dominates it, and dominates it big time. That isn't something that is likely to change anytime soon, but under the hood, Resolve has the potential. For televised content, commercials, or projects needing lots of motion graphics, Photoshop work, Illustrator text, web publishing, social media, Resolve still can't compete with Adobe Creative Cloud. 
But for feature films, especially for low budget filmmakers who need a single app that's free and can handle most film needs, Resolve is the hero box. I use the paid version of Resolve called Resolve Studio now. I started my film edit in version 17 and I think it finished in version 18 or something. Since version 16 though, it's been rock solid. I still use an 8 year old 1080 Ti Threadripper system to edit and grade 8K Canon RAW footage if you can believe that. I can't imagine what I could do with an RTX 4090 and the latest Intel processor. Probably also play Cyberpunk while I grade. I edited with 4K proxies. I use M.2 drives for editing and cache. And the reason is I can't spend thousands on high capacity M.2 drives for just one feature film. Once the film was locked, I used Resolve for the overlays and end credits, which was the only time I used Fusion. The title sequence was done by a third party, the only part I didn't handle myself. Uh, integration with Fusion can get a lot better. Fusion works a lot slower, I think, under the hood. It's not seamless with the editing app, but it's getting better with every iteration. For my film, we had about 30 ADR tracks, all of which I had to sync and edit myself in Resolve, because who needs a dialogue editor when you have unlimited coffee and self-loathing, right? The Foley came in perfectly synced, but of course that wouldn't do for me, so I decided to re-edit the film and resync all the Foley myself. Try that sometime. In DaVinci Resolve, editing a hundred or so audio tracks will slow down any system. I also did the sound design for my film. That included about 20 or so tracks of ambience and sound effects, all synced in Resolve. With some decent audio hardware, I believe I could have used Fairlight for most of the sound editing tasks, but I didn't touch Fairlight for the system. I used the Resolve editor. The music was composed in Logic Pro by me. The exported tracks had to be synced too. Now why make it easier when you can make it harder? After handing off the audio bounces to my mixer, the project was moved to the color tab. My film was entirely graded and finished in Resolve. The exports passed all QC for a theatrical release and there were three different companies. I had to watch the film on different screens and projectors to ensure my grade translated well. Of course it did. Regarding color grading apps, is there even competition to Resolve? I worked on Baselight before, which is another industry standard. Sure, Baselight has its strengths. It's a great app. But being a hero box isn't one of those trends. Also, Baselight is priced out of the indie filmmaker market anyway. I spent about a year in post-production and Resolve was solid every step of the way. The free version should be enough for most filmmakers still in the can I play daddy mode. If you need the extra features, go for the paid version. It's a no-brainer. Your skills will be the limitation, not Resolve. Bottom line, until Blackmagic Design screws up, which is bound to happen at some point, the quality functionality and stability of DaVinci Resolve is good enough for feature films for any release platform, OTT or theatrical, whatever you want. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Now watch another video.